Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're listening to this on audio on Spotify or Stitcher or iTunes, um, just know you can watch these podcasts here on our YouTube channel. So if you are watching on our YouTube channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, you can have access to all the videos we already have here on YouTube. Uh, we have hundreds of videos here. I'm going to be posting podcasts here, interviews here with other coaches. Uh, I filmed a podcast recently. It was an interview with Coach Nick Aldero. Um, you can go and check that out on our YouTube channel. Um, and we'll be doing more interviews like that coming up. So make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel or you are subscribed to our podcast on whatever platform that you like. Um, now, in today's episode, I'm going to be going over a couple of different topics. Um, these are different questions that I've seen and different things that I've thought uh, about within the sports training industry, where I see things going, how I see things evolving. Um, and I thought this would be something that I'd, I'd like to share here because I think this will give you a lot of value with uh, future decision making with what you're doing. And I think this is going to challenge the way that you think about the future with some of the stuff that we talk about here. So the first thing I want to cover, and this is, you know, it sounds like it's so far away, but it's really not. Um, but what does training look like in 10 years from now, right? So 2030, so 2030, 10 years from now, what is that going to look like? And I will tell you, there's a huge jump between 2010 and 2020. Um, the big jump that I saw personally with, with what I do is online coaching became a lot more popular in 2017 and 2018. Right now, it's way more popular. In 2020, it's way more popular than it was a year ago. And I do see in 10 years from now, I see that as just being absolutely massive. Um, so if you're not thinking about creating something or building something online, I would highly encourage you to learn and start taking the steps to start building online and have that as an asset for the future. And I, the way I look at it is it's going to be kind of a hybrid of in-person training and online training. And with online training, it's just a lot different because you can train someone that doesn't live in your area, it's very scalable. Um, you could have clients from different countries that buy your program or that subscribe to some sort of monthly service that you put together. And I really do see like the role is just becoming more and more connected. Uh, I mean, I look at it with what I do with coaches. Like I have coaches from several different countries that are part of our coaching program. I see online coaching being just bigger and bigger and bigger over the next 10 years. And I think that's a, a must that you, you, I think you should have within your business and something that you should start looking to build. And, and it's not going to be this overnight thing, but in 10 years from now, I see that as, as massive. And if you start creating something like that now, not only will you just have an advantage over other people who wait. But in the next 10 years, you're going to be able to build a huge either subscriber base, a big email list. Um, you can have a big buyers list. You can be selling digital products, online coaching. I mean, I've talked about that sort of stuff in the past on my YouTube channel. Um, there's coaches that we help that are actively doing that right now. Um, a lot of them are succeeding at a high level just through online coaching. And um, it's something I've been a part of. I, I started that a while ago. I, I have a different YouTube channel um, called Online Soccer Skills. Like you can kind of see how I did that. Um, started that multiple years ago. And I do see the next 10 years as being just continuously growing and growing and growing online. And I would suggest if I were to talk to anyone who's starting a business today, I would say, hey, this is something you should think about. It's going to be better to, to try to put that together versus waiting. And the longer you wait for something like that, the easier it is for someone else to start and do the exact same idea that you want to do. 
right? So that should be something, it should be on your radar. It's gonna be a, a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, it already is with e-learning and it's just gonna be something that I feel like it's, it's just gonna blow up. And we saw it over, you know, with coronavirus. If you were unable to train in person, the only other option is online. And coaches who had that set up or coaches that set that up during that time, they thrived. Uh, people who didn't know how to do that or were too late to the game, it was hard for them because now they're trying to learn something and, and it's hard to learn something when you're under pressure. Um, you know, that's a tough gig for people who, who hadn't learned how to do that before. And that's why, you know, if you do that, you're, you're probably going to be better prepared for any sort of disaster or like crazy economy thing. Um, and that, that gives you more legs with your business. Like you, that gives you more leverage and it gives you more authority online. If you start building an asset online, which would be either a YouTube channel, uh, a big Instagram following, Facebook following, um, all of it really boils down to your email list. And I've talked about that at nauseum over the past couple of years. Um, and you know, the proof is in the pudding. You have an email list, you're going to survive. If you have zero email lists, it's going to be hard to build something online. All right. Now that's the first topic is the future. And I'm curious to know from you, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening, I'd love to hear your feedback. Like where do you see things going over the next 10 years? And are you actively building something online? Um, if you are like, I'd love to hop on a call with you and, and try to give you some pointers with you know how to do that or what to do. Um, I can tell you what works and I can tell you what doesn't work. Um, and I've seen personally, I've gone through failure with that and success with that. Um, I know a lot about digital products, creating uh, you know a higher end ticket type of product uh, online. I'd love to see if I can help you. If you have any interest in that, reach out to me. Right, reach out to me on YouTube or send me an email. You know how to get in contact with me. All right, next one here, and this is something that I see right now. I'm seeing this in 2020, even like after coronavirus hit. Um, it's you know what type of people are are getting into this industry, right? And back in the day, I, I saw this and I looked very closely at this in 2016 and you can go back on my youtube channel and see this but uh back then i was only shooting like those types of videos for soccer coaches and my channel back then it was called soccer entrepreneur i had a website called soccerentrepreneur.com that's how i started ultimately is i was helping soccer coaches and i saw back then it was soccer coaches that were in club soccer, right? Or it was like ex-players that played in college or something like that, um, that were coaching at some level that wanted to start their own thing. And then I started to see, you know, there's teachers and there's other people that were within soccer that wanted to branch off and start their own thing and do it full time. And we did that, we focused on that. Then there was other coaches from other sports that started to ask, you know, basketball, baseball, football, cheerleading, volleyball, uh, track and field, sports performance. And it just, we just kept helping coaches from all these other sports. And then I sort of see though, there's a lot of people from different categories that are looking to get into this type of business. And I just wrote um, a little list here, but the first one that I've seen that I feel like there's going to be a surge of these types of people that join um, this industry is teachers. Um, specifically like PE teachers. Uh, a lot of PE teachers and teachers have started to realize, well, I have time. I have an interest in coaching. Um, on the weekends, I can try to start something and then be able to build that into a full-time thing later on. Um, and they already have good contacts with kids and, and families. So it's like they have a kind of a good advantage starting off versus someone who has zero contacts. Um, the next, this is pretty obvious is coaches that are within sports. So if, if there's a club coach or a high school coach, if seasons are ending 
and that's what it looks like in my city, right, in the fall. Those coaches don't really have anything to do, and if they get let go from whatever school they're at or whatever team they're at, like, they already have connections with families, so they could easily start a training business. And I feel like this is something where a lot of coaches are going to be coming into if they were previously coaching a team or a club or an organization because they love coaching, they want to continue doing it, and that's going to be a great alternative is by starting your own business, all right? Uh, next one, and I see this has been more common that I've seen, it's it's people who have great careers, but they hate their job. Um, I've seen this. Like, I talk to coaches every day over the phone who, like, you know, I, I feel like I could, I could press rewind, <laughs> and everyone has the same sort of problem that they're dealing with. It's they have a job, they're making money, but they feel like when they wake up in the morning, they have the same feeling I had when I had my last job. They don't like it. They don't like being told what to do. They want to have more freedom, more flexibility. They want to chase and do something that they're fired up to do. They don't feel inspired at work, and they, they want to stop doing that. And there's a lot of people I've talked to that have left good careers, like some people making um, you know, forty to $80,000 a year, and, and a lot of people would love that, right? But these guys realize, you know what, I don't want to do that. Tired of doing that. I don't want to do that for the next 20 or 30 years of my life. I want to have my own business. I want to have more control. So a lot of those types of people that have good careers are going to be stopping and jumping into having a business. And I've seen that. That's been a lot more common over the last six months from my experience as far as talking to coaches who are unhappy with their jobs. All right. Uh, next one I've seen is younger people. So I've talked to... You know, there's a lot of high school kids and young college, uh, whether they're like athletes, they're, they're in college, they want to start a business, they want to start getting some income while they're in school. There's, there's a ton of people out there um, that are younger, and I would encourage anyone who's younger to start when you're younger. Don't wait until after college is done. Do it now. Um, that's one thing I, I know if I could go back in time, it's one of the things I would switch is I would have started this business when I was 17 years old and there's multiple 17 year olds I've talked to that I've consulted with that have started a business and a lot of them are generating more income than a lot of people in their thirties or forties that work a nine to five job. All right. And these guys are young. All right. So those types of people, I see there's, there's going to be a big surge in high school slash college guys and girls that are athletes that want to start their own thing. And then the last one I see, and again, I've seen this is, this has been more common. It's older coaches that maybe they previously coached high school or they were a high school teacher. And, you know, these guys are between 50 and 60 or maybe a little bit, you know, younger, maybe 45 to 60 years old. Um, and they have the, the bug to coach. Uh, you know, they, they have that itch. They want to continue coaching. They just don't want to do it for an organized team anymore. They want to have their own business. And so there's a wide variety of people here that I see jumping in. And I see over the next 10 years, specifically in the next 10 years, there's going to be a huge rise in people who look to start their own business. And we see this, like, with this type of industry, the barrier to entry is very low. Like, you don't need to have a certification. You don't need to go to college to get a degree. Um, the startup capital is very little. Like, you don't need to have an investor. You don't need to go to Silicon Valley and, and pitch this idea to Mark Cuban and Damon Jump. <laughs> like, you, like, the barrier to entry is very low. The investment to start is very low. Um, and if you can, if you take that compared to starting like a different type of business, like a restaurant or something, it doesn't even compare. Um, I mean, you can start with very little money. Um, you start with no money um, and start getting clients. So I see a lot of coaches out there from all different ages, all different scenarios get into coaching. And if you're one of those people that's watching right now and you're like, man, I want to get started. Um, I need help. I, I, I want to do this as a business and I want to start small. 
the best thing that I can give you, all right, it's my startup ebook and video series. All you have to do is just go to my website, buildmysportsbiz.com. And what I'll do if you are listening or watching this and you want to check that out, send me an email. All right, my email is buildmysportsbiz at gmail.com. Send me an email with your name, right? Send me an email uh, with your telephone number. And if you do that and you tell me like what city or what sport you're in, just give me some brief information about you. I'll send you a 50% coupon code that you can use, uh, you know, right after you send me a message. I'll send you back, that back and I'd probably love to just chat with you to, you know, give you some pointers on what are the best ways to get started, right? So shoot me a message, I'll give you that coupon code, all right? Then the next thing here, um, and I've thought about this a lot over the past couple of months because right when Corona hit, uh, you know, no one, no one knew like what was the, the what was going to happen long term, what was going to happen the first couple of months. I mean, I remember watching the news, and I normally never watch the news, but I remember watching and. It was pretty clear that there was, you know, things were shutting down, the virus is getting worse, whatever. And it doesn't matter if you're on the right or the left. I, I don't care about politics. But what I what I would say is, you know, there was a lot of teaching moments when Corona hit. And I remember very vividly, right? And hopefully people that are connected to me on Facebook <laughs> that I'm friends with don't listen to this. Um, but I'm just going to call it how I see it. I remember logging in and there was people that were talking about like, yeah, we can't go to work, can't make money, can't do anything. It's all negative. And in my head, I remember I had like a day, it was a two day period. I was really freaking out. I was like, man, what's going to happen? And then I realized I was like, it's not about concentrating on what's going to happen. It's about focusing on what, what can we do? What are the solutions here? So I went back to the drawing board myself. I looked at my business and I was like, well, you know, here's the tweaks I need to make with my clients right now. I can't wait. I'm going to do this right now. I don't care what happens with the virus. Um, I can't focus on that. I need to focus on what I can do. And that's, that's one thing I would, you know, consider is what did you learn when it happened? And what, what did you learn now? Like, like, what did it teach you? Did you just kind of sit around? And, and most people did just sit around. They didn't do anything. They thought I was just going to go by like that. And I was prepping for worst case scenario. And I'm still prepping for that. Like at this moment, it's like I have things in order now where if they shut down the, the economy again, they shut down everything, I'm going to be fine. And you should ask yourself, are you going to be fine? Do you have things organized that way? Do you have things set up? Or are you going to just be at the disposal of what happens in our government, right? So hopefully uh, you learned something during that time. Hopefully you were building something during that time. I talked with a guy. This is an awesome story. I talked with a guy um, maybe two months over the, uh, over the phone. But he told me what he did was like right when Corona hit, he, like, he lost his job. Like it they fired him, so he had zero income, and he had been wanting to start a business. He'd been wanting to do it for a while. I think he'd been watching my YouTube videos for over two years or something like that. And that kind of kick-started, you know what, I'm gonna take more control now. And he turned his garage into an area where he could train kids, and he started training kids, started making income. And I think right now, like he's doing that pretty much full time over a very short amount of time, all right? He was resourceful. He wasn't crying about it. He wasn't complaining about it. And in his life, that could have been one of the biggest blessings because like maybe he wouldn't have started his business if that didn't happen, right? And I see a lot of people, they have used this as an opportunity to start and other people, they use it as another opportunity to complain. So your mindset is gonna be everything, right? And the other thing that I've seen uh, this be the kind of last thing I chat about here is jobs, wh whether you agree with this or not, I mean, I think this is the facts. 
jobs aren't as secure as people think, right? Everyone who would had a comfortable job, I mean, a lot of people got let go and there was nothing that they could do about it. And I feel really bad for anyone. I'm sure there's, there's people that are watching this video right now that did get let go of their job. And I'm sorry if that happened to you. Um, you know, that sucks. It's, it's brutal and there's nothing that you could do about it, but it made me realize, you know what, if you're in a position where someone else controls your future, they can turn off the light switch as fast as they want. And when something like this happens, with the coronavirus, it's, it's uncontrollable. Like it's not your fault that they fired you. Um, but it made me realize having a business is one of the safest things that you can be doing because you will determine your success. Like even if a, vir a major virus hits, well, you can pivot, you can tweak, you can change what you're doing at any given moment. And if you're really resourceful, then you'll probably have nothing to worry about. And no one can fire you when you have your own business. You're, you're not gonna fire yourself, <laughs> right? So I hope what I covered today, I hope this helps. Um, again, I'm gonna be doing uh, more podcasts like this, but I'm going to be bringing on other coaches as well to pick their brain. I'm going to have them share their stories of how they uh, achieve success with their business. I already have a bunch of people in line right now that I'm going to be interviewing. Uh, I can't wait to share their stories coming up. And uh, like I said, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what we're doing. If you want to get in touch with me, all right, fastest way is going to be sending me a text. My number is 210-960-5771. And if you want the discount to our ebook and video series, like I said, send me a message. Uh, you can either text me or you can send me a message to my email at buildmysportsbiz at gmail.com. Like I said, you get 50% discount um, on our ebook video series. So that's it, guys. I'll see you on the next episode.